His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa sent a cable of congratulations to the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, on Saudi Arabia's National Day. His Majesty the King wished the Saudi monarch abundant health and happiness to continue the march of development witnessed by Saudi Arabia under his leadership. His Majesty expressed appreciation and pride in the strong and distinguished historical ties between the two brotherly countries and peoples, affirming Bahrain's keenness to continue strengthening and developing cooperation and close joint action with the Kingdom in light of the strategic partnership between the two countries to fulfil the ambitions, aspirations and common interests of the two countries and benefit the two brotherly peoples. His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Safiya Palace Sheikh Ibrahim bin Khalid bin Mohammed bin Ibrahim bin Khalid Al Khalifa, Sheikh Salman bin Khalid bin Mohammed bin Ibrahim bin Khalid Al Khalifa, and Sheikh Abdullah bin Khalid bin Mohammed bin Ibrahim bin Khalid Al Khalifa, the sons and grandsons of the later Sheikh Khalid bin Mohammed bin Ibrahim bin Khalid bin Al Khalifa. His Majesty expressed his sincere condolences on the passing of the deceased, praying to Allah the Almighty to rest his soul in eternal peace and grant his family patience and solace. The children of the deceased expressed their thanks and appreciation to His Majesty's condolences and sympathy on their loss, praying to Allah the Almighty to grant His Majesty good health and happiness for the Kingdom and its people. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa issued a decree 80 of 2024 restructuring the Board of Trustees of the Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa Academy for Diplomatic Studies, based on proposal by the Minister of Foreign Affairs and following the approval of the Cabinet. The Board of Trustees of Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa Academy for Diplomatic Studies shall be restructured and chaired by the Minister of Foreign Affairs with the following members Dr. Sheikh Abdullah bin Ahmed Al Khalifa. Sheikh Dawaj bin Salman bin Dawaj Al Khalifa, Dr. Sheikh Minera bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, Maha Abdul Hamid Mafiz, Nada Simia Al Said, Adan Abdul Rahib Isak. The term of membership of the board should be four years and may be renewed. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, sent a cable of congratulations to the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, on the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia's National Day. His Royal Highness sent a similar cable to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister of Saudi Arabia, Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud. The Deputy Prime Minister, Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, chaired the weekly cabinet meeting at Qadabia Palace. The Cabinet highlighted the importance of His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa's address to distinguished Bahraini citizens, where His Majesty expressed pride in the accomplishments across various sectors and international forums. In recognition of the upcoming World Tourism Day, the Cabinet noted the importance of doubling efforts to advance the tourism sector, praising the national workforce's role in implementing strategies to enhance its development. The Cabinet welcomed the Kingdom's leap to 18th place in the UN e-Government Survey 2024, an increase of 36 positions, placing the Kingdom among the global leaders in e-Government services.
the Cabinet commended the efforts of the Ministerial Committee for Information Technology and Communications and other government agencies for this achievement. The Cabinet then approved the following memorandums. Memorandum submitted by the Government Executive Committee regarding priority draft laws aimed at keeping pace with development needs that benefit citizens. A memorandum submitted by the Minister of Interior on amendments to the decree reorganising the Ministry of Interior. A memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs on the Outer Space Declaration document an outcome of the United Nations Office for Outer Space Affairs Conference on the management and sustainability of outer space activities in Lisbon, Portugal. A memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs on the draft resolution defining the administrative body and the Minister overseeing a private associations and institutions regarding journalism, media or advertising and defining their rules. A memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding the Government's response to three proposals and two laws submitted by the Representatives Council and a law submitted by the Shura Council. The Cabinet then took note of the following Ministerial reports. The outcomes of Bahrain's participation in the World Utilities Congress 2024 and the 6th Arab Water Forum. The outcomes of Bahrain's participation in the Summit of Future Action Day. Relations between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia have witnessed continuous growth over many years. On the National Day of Saudi Arabia, the people of Bahrain recall the relationship between His Majesty the King and the custodian of the two holy mosques as an exemplary model of a strong brotherly relationship between two leaders and two brotherly countries. More in this report. History is a witness to the relations between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, a relationship that has been consolidated by the forefathers throughout the years to become today an exemplary model of relations between two countries and two peoples. During the prosperous era of His Majesty the King, His Majesty continued to build on the legacy of this historic relationship. The prosperous era witnessed reciprocal visits that strengthened cooperation and promoted common interests at all levels, especially at the political and economic levels. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister of Saudi Arabia were keen to fulfill the aspirations of the leaders of both countries, as reflected in many positions and initiatives, including the establishment of the Saudi Bahraini Coordination Council. On this day, the Kingdom of Bahrain recalls the historic fraternal visit of the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, to Bahrain, which celebrated the occasion. Bahrain's celebration of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia's National Day is an annual event as the achievements of Saudi Arabia are always a source of pride for the people of Bahrain. The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia enjoys a global, political, economic and security status and a leading role in resolving international and regional conflicts through diplomatic means. This has made Saudi diplomacy highly regarded and respected throughout history in its Arab, Islamic and international surroundings. More in this report. The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia is committed to fostering unity and stability within the Arab and Islamic worlds. The Kingdom actively supports Arab causes and advocates for the rights of Muslim minorities globally, aiming for peace and security to enhance the quality of life for all. Under the leadership of the custodian of the two holy mosques and His Royal Highness the Saudi Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Saudi Arabia's Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Embassies work to strengthen relations with countries worldwide, reflecting its commitment to its citizens' interests. The Kingdom's diplomacy emphasizes national interest while enhancing its role in promoting regional and global stability. Saudi Arabia's foreign policy is strategically designed to benefit from international opportunities while at the same time diversifying its economy. This commitment is clear in the Saudi Foreign Minister's ongoing interactions with global leaders addressing various regional issues. Recent Arab and Islamic summits, along with summit with the African nations hosted in Saudi Arabia, showcase the kingdom's growing influence on the world stage. The Bahraini-Saudi economic relations reflect strong cooperation in various fields, from trade to investment, which contributes to enhancing the economic stability of the two kingdoms. More in this report. The economic relations between Bahrain and Saudi Arabia 
have witnessed steady development and growth over the years to occupy a distinguished and advanced position, which represents a unique model of cooperation between the Gulf countries for their long decades, and are distinguished by being based on solid historical and geographical foundations since the establishment of the GCC. Perhaps one of the most important main factors in strengthening this economic relations is the strong political ties between the leaderships in both countries, which contributed to creating a favorable environment for economic cooperation, in addition to infrastructure projects such as the King Fat Causeway, which facilitates the movement of individuals and goods, thus enhancing trade exchange. In light of the common desire to put visions and aspirations into practice, the Saudi-Bahraini Coordination Council, headed by their Royal Highnesses, the Crown Princes of the two countries, has resulted in a number of major investment projects in Bahrain. Many agreements and memoranda of understanding have also been signed that will enhance cooperation in the fields of trade, industry and investment, and contribute to supporting joint cooperation in a way that drives the wheel of economic development towards more advanced levels and meets the desired aspirations. This partnership continued throughout history through joint coordination, cooperation and cohesion in various fields to achieve the vision of His Majesty the King and the custodian of the two holy mosques. All goals were unified and visions were matched so that relations between the two kingdoms remain a symbol of successful and solid relations throughout time, confirming day after day the strong brotherly relations between the two kingdoms. And to speak more about the historic brotherly relations between Bahrain and Saudi Arabia, we are joined by the Chief of Legal Affairs and Acting Chief of GCC Affairs Ambassador Mohammed Abdurrahman al Haddam, who delivered the following statement. Firstly, I would like to take uh, the opportunity to express my sincere congratulations to the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud, King of Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, on the 94th anniversary of Saudi National Day. As the Kingdom of Bahrain participates every year on this occasion based on the strong relationship established between the two countries, sharing close ties between the two kingdoms, which is based on firm foundation of mutual understanding and a strong social and cultural bond between the people of the two countries. I would also like to take this opportunity to affirm His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa on enhancing the close historical relations and mutual interest that bind the two brotherly kingdoms. The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia occupies a great place in the heart of every Bahraini, as it is evident from the displays of celebration that prevail in the Kingdom of Bahrain on this occasion in appreciation of the Kingdom's wise leadership and its people. In addition, the two brotherly kingdoms are distinguished by identical vision regarding many regional and international issues to work in the interests of the two countries and its people, security and peace in the region and the world. This came after the agreement to establish the Bahraini Saudi Coordination Council, headed by His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister for the Kingdom of Bahrain, and His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and, and Prime Minister of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, to developing a, a joint vision that works to strengthen and sustain relations between the two countries along to the goals of the Gulf Cooperation Council. In conclusion, the future for uh, deep-rooted relations between Bahrain and Saudi Arabia will only be continuation to develop under the wise leadership of the two countries. Bahrain International Airport, in cooperation with Bahrain Tourism and Exhibitions Authority and Bahrain Airport Services, celebrated the 94th Saudi National Day as part of the Kingdom of Bahrain's celebrations. Travellers arriving to Bahrain on flights from Gulf Air and Saudi Arabian Airlines were welcomed with a series of festive events that celebrated the heritage and cultural ties between the two countries. 
The airport staff presented souvenirs to those arriving from Saudi Arabia, while a folk band performed national songs to mark the occasion. On this occasion of the deep-rooted relations between Bahrain and Saudi Arabia, buildings and landmarks across Bahrain were adorned in green to celebrate Saudi Arabia's 94th National Day. Official and private institutions were illuminated in green, reflecting the joyful atmosphere and shared sentiments of happiness among the people of Bahrain for this cherished national occasion. Bahrain TV participated in the coverage of the 94th Saudi National Day celebrations in Al Assa Governorate. Under the patronage of the Governor of Al Assa, His Royal Highness Prince Saud bin Talal Al Badr. The ceremony was held at the Floating Theatre in King Abdullah Environmental Park. The celebration, which was attended by a large number of citizens and residents, included a number of festive events, in addition to the interactive fountain in the centre of the park, which displayed stunning artistic formations, bearing the colours of the Saudi flag. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdul Latif bin Rashid Al Ziani, participated in the Future Summit at the UN headquarters in New York under the chairmanship of the Secretary General of the United Nations, Antonio Guterres. The Minister delivered a speech in which he conveyed the greetings of His Majesty the King and his wishes that this summit would yield positive and tangible results in line with the objectives of the Future Charter. The Minister said that the world already faces and interrelated challenges which require collective efforts to address them. He added that Bahrain is fully committed to these goals in line with the vision of His Majesty the King, stressing that Bahrain has made unremitting efforts to ensure that the Arab summit, hosted by Bahrain last May, comes out with constructive decisions and results. He also said that the Bahrain summit showed the Arab consensus on the need to end the Palestinian-Israeli conflict through the two-state solution and the establishment of a sovereign Palestinian state with a full membership of the UN and the summit adopted Bahrain's initiative to convene and host an international conference for peace in the Middle East. To achieve that, the minister added that the summit also demonstrated the commitment of Arab countries to address the broader humanitarian and development challenges facing the world as it included initiatives aimed at expanding access to healthcare and education for those affected by conflicts in the region, in cooperation with the relevant agencies of the UN and developing cooperation among Arab countries in financial technology to enhance the prosperity of all people in the region. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr Abdul Latif bin Rashid Al Ziani, participated in the coordination meeting of GCC Ministerial Council. The meeting was held at the headquarters of Qatar's mission to the United Nations in New York, chaired by Prime Minister and Minister of Foreign Affairs of Qatar, Chairman of the current session of the Ministerial Council, Sheikh Mohammed Athani, and attended by GCC Ministers of Foreign Affairs and GCC Secretary General Ajazm al Badawi. The issues on the agenda of the General Assembly meetings were discussed, as well as the scheduled meetings between the GCC countries and ways to enhance joint coordination between them and unify positions and issues scheduled to be discussed in the meetings of the United Nations General Assembly and other meetings related to international affairs and current global issues. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr Abdul Latif bin Rashid Al Ziani, participated in the ministerial meeting on the situation in the Gaza Strip and the two-state solution to achieve a just peace in the region, held Sunday at the UN headquarters in New York on the sidelines of the 79th session of the UN General Assembly. The Foreign Minister affirmed Bahrain's firm position in support of the right of the Palestinian people to establish their independent Palestinian state on the borders of the June 4, 1967, with East Jerusalem as its capital, noting the firm Arab position at the 33rd Arab Summit, which supports the goals and principles of the UN, which seeks to maintain international peace and security. He added that the committee should prioritise its future interactions around the outcomes of the Bahrain summit and the initiatives adopted there, 
as these reflect a strong Arab stance on the Palestinian cause and address the rights of the Palestinian people. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdul Latif bin Rashid Al Ziani, met with the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Foreign Affairs and expatriates of Jordan, Dr. Ayman Safadi. The two officials discussed the historical fraternal relations between Bahrain and Jordan, focusing on further enhancing bilateral cooperation and coordination to serve their mutual interests. They also reviewed current regional developments, including the situation in Gaza, escalating tensions in Lebanon and the West Bank, and efforts for a permanent ceasefire in Gaza. Additionally, they reviewed the role of the Joint Arab Islamic Committee in these efforts during the UN session. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif bin Rashid Al Ziani, participated in the 17th ministerial meeting of the Global Governance Group 3G, chaired by Singapore's Foreign Minister, Dr. Vivian Balakrishnan. Dr. Al Ziani emphasised the importance of such gatherings for fostering constructive engagement among G20 countries, particularly in light of escalating global challenges. He underscored that achieving SDGs require a stable environment and highlighted the urgent need to address the ongoing Gaza conflict, advocating for a ceasefire, hostage release and humanitarian aid delivery. The minister noted that the Arab summit held in Bahrain in May pushed for an international peace conference aimed at resolving the Palestinian issue based on a two-state solution. He also pointed out initiatives from the summit focused on providing education and health services to those affected by regional conflicts urging G20 nations to prioritise these efforts. He said that Bahrain welcomes the G20's continued constructive engagement in promoting and advancing general multilateral efforts to build a more peaceful, stable and secure world. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr Abdel Latif Al Ziani, met with Slovenia's Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of European and Foreign Affairs, Tajan Fajon. Alziani welcomed Fajon, expressing appreciation for the decision of Slovenia to recognise the state of Palestine, appreciating the continuous support provided by Slovenia to support the rights of the Palestinian people, including the right to establish an independent Palestinian state. Alziani stressed that the Arab summit hosted by Bahrain last May adopted an important initiative to hold an international conference to establish the Palestinian state according to the two-state solution and to support efforts to recognise the Palestinian state and accept its full membership in the UN. The meeting discussed the close friendship between Bahrain and Slovenia, the progress and the desire to strengthen cooperation in various fields. It also discussed developments in Gaza, Arab and international efforts to achieve a permanent ceasefire, protect civilians and civilian objects, release hostages and facilitate humanitarian aid delivery. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif bin Rashid Al Ziani, met with the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Uzbekistan, Bakhti Yasedov. The two sides discussed the distinguished friendship relations between the two friendly countries, means of enhancing and developing them in various fields, and raising the level of cooperation in various fields in order to serve mutual interests. They also discussed the latest developments in the regional situation the developments of the war on the Gaza Strip and regional conflicts, in addition to topics of common interest. <coughs> the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif bin Rashid Al Ziani, met with the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Uganda, Jeja Abdubaka. They reviewed the friendship relations between Bahrain and Uganda and the development and growth in various fields and discussed ways to develop them to serve common interests. They also exchanged views on various regional and international issues, challenges that threaten international peace and security, regional stability and the war on the Gaza Strip, the humanitarian situation and its repercussions on the lives of civilians and areas of coordination and joint cooperation in international forums. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif bin Rashid Al Ziani, met with the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Cyprus, Dr. Konstantinos Am Kompos. They discussed the course of the historical friendship relations between the two friendly countries and the means to further develop them in various domains. The two officials reviewed the latest regional developments and the implications on regional security and stability, 
the war on the Gaza Strip and Arab and international efforts aimed at reaching a permanent ceasefire, protecting civilians and civilian objects, releasing hostages and detainees and delivering humanitarian aid to the civilian population. The Minister of Housing and Urban Planning, Amna Afrumehi, held a meeting with the Chairman of the Bahrain Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Samir Nas, and a number of members of the Chamber's Board of Directors. The meeting discussed the latest developments of a number of issues related to the housing and real estate sectors in Bahrain and reviewed the results of the Ministry's plans to provide housing services in partnership with the private sector through the Housing Finance Programme as well as the Government Land Development Rights Programme. They also exchanged views on ways to achieve the sustainability of providing housing services to citizens by enhancing the involvement of the private sector in providing housing services to citizens and promoting more facilities and means of support for citizens. In celebration of the United Nations International Day of Peace, This Is Bahrain held its annual event under the theme Cultivating a Culture of Peace. The event aimed to emphasise the importance of peace in today's world and highlight Bahrain's commitment to peaceful coexistence. This is Bahrain welcomed distinguished guests and attendees, including representatives from various faiths and cultures. Uh, this is Bahrain. I'm delighted to welcome everyone here this evening to the Cultural Hotel in Manama, where we are holding an event to commemorate the, the United Nations International Day of Peace, which is commemorated every year on the 21st of September. The theme this year is Cultivating a Culture of Peace. And of course, a culture of peace is something that the Kingdom of Bahrain excels in and has done for many, many hundreds of years. We're delighted today to have with us people from all the different faith communities, the different NGOs and clubs and societies, schools and universities, and uh, everyone's come together to cherish and celebrate how we live in the Kingdom of Bahrain in peaceful coexistence. I've come to participate in um, this event, which is called Cultivating a Culture of Peace. Um, we have very much a culture of peace here in Bahrain um, because of the vision of um, King Hamad uh, bin Isa al Khalifa, um, bringing together faith in dialogue and in cultural exchange. We are very happy to have attended this uh, event of, in celebration of the International Day of Peace. Uh, being in Bahrain for many years and um, our school celebrating its 30th founding anniversary this year, we feel it's very important that uh, we expose our kids to the uh, many programs of the government for peace. It's wonderful to be here this evening uh, to support This Is Bahrain. Uh, events like this tonight really represent uh, the overall Bahraini ethos. Uh, as, uh, as, as directed and kind of lived by His Majesty. Uh, coexistence, peace, and tonight we celebrate priests and children. It's a wonderful evening. I'm looking forward to it. Under the patronage of Egypt's Prime Minister, Dr. Mustafa Madbouli, the activities of the Sama International Festival are being held uh, during the period from the 20th to the 26th of September with the participation of several artistic groups from different countries of the world. More in this report from Egypt. The Samar International Festival was inaugurated under the title of 17 Years of Creativity, with the participation of 30 diversified groups in a way that creates a sense of cultural diversity, exchanging their own unique cultures. The festival is being held under the slogan of A Message of Peace to the World and it is aiming at creating an unforgettable experience for the attendees in a one-of-a-kind blend with different cultures intertwining to create a magnificent piece of art that reflects the depth of the global civilizations. The festival, which runs until the 26th of September, hosts a number of Arabic troops the organizers chose historical places in Fatimite Cairo to witness the activities of the festival. 
The festival comprised 30 different troops of diverse cultures. It had groups from Morocco, Algeria, Tunisia, Indonesia, Djibouti, and Kazakhstan, which is the festival's guest of honor. The Samaa festival is one uh, of the most important cultural and artistic events uh, in the world because uh, uh, when, when we see the participation of all these countries and all these troops from different cultures, so uh, this is so important and uh, it, it confirms uh, the role that uh, the festival plays. The participants in Samar festival asserted that holding such an important gathering in Egypt and more specifically in Fatimid historical places made it a much better experience to exchange the cultures. We are extremely delighted to be participating in this festival for the first time among numerous troops from around the globe who want to take part in this cultural gathering which is being hosted by Egypt. The identity of the Egyptian audience, as you can see today, is a proof of excellence and we wish for more success in the upcoming rounds. The attendees stated that the program of the Semer International Festival proposes an opportunity to get to know the different cultures of other countries and continents, adding that the festival has a unique taste that could be rarely experienced. This is my first time to attend the festival, but I went to other cultural events. I am very proud to witness such a festival in Egypt, and I have a lot of high hopes for it. I love these kinds of cultural festivals as the organizers try to give amazing gatherings every year. Over the week, the audience could have the chance to witness the activities of the Samar International Festival to indulge in a unique cultural experience within historic places. In its 17th edition, the Samar International Festival is being held under the auspices of uh, Prime Minister Dr. Mustafa Medbouli of Egypt and of course with the participation of uh, 30 different troops. This time around, the message and the slogan is a message of peace to the world, creating a sense of diversity between countries, continents and of course the Arab world and international. This is Ahmed Nader reporting for the television.